The chairperson is Melvina Lathan. Introducing to you are and the new WBN Welterweight Champion of the World, Adrian the Problem Bruner. At the age of 23, Adrian Broner joins legends Roberto Duran and Roy Jones Jr. as well as Robert Guerrero as the only fighters to win a world title in their first fight after jumping over a weight class, winning via split decision over Pauli Malinaji. The new WBA welterweight champion is the problem. That Let's go to Jim Gray. Adrian, congratulations. How would you assess this fight? Certainly, this was your toughest competition as a professional. Um, first of all, in my um, Showtime debut, I got to do this for my fans. Because this is what they want to see. Hey, Pops, brush my hair. Okay. The tradition, I guess, continues. Now, about the fight. Um, Pauly what was your assessment? Pauly fought exactly how I thought he was going to fight. Uh, as soon as he felt my power, he, he got on his bicycle and I had to literally cut him off the whole fight. Um, I respect him. He's a hell of a fighter. He's a world-class fighter. And to come in somebody's hometown and, and, and beat them with a split decision, that's, that's, that's great to me. Adrian, the volume of punches certainly favored Polly. However, you kept saying the entire fight, we could read your lips and hear you, you can't hit me. Were you at ever any point hit with a shot that concerned you? Negative, man. He couldn't hit me. He couldn't hit me. He was shadow boxing. When this fight, when you knew that you were losing rounds, particularly early, it seemed as though you were able to take control, came alive in the fifth round, and then the sixth round, you seemed to be much more. Were you feeling out in those first few rounds, or what was your strategy? Listen to me. You seen I came out with French Montana. I ain't worrying about nothing. So, with that being said, I give a, I got to give a, a, a supreme shout out to Al Heyman. Um, Aviance Jews, you know, breadwinner for this nice 18 karat grill in my mouth, you know. And let me ask you about winning your third title. You're 23 years of age, three different weight divisions. What does that mean to you at this point in your career? I mean, it's a tremendous accomplishment. 23 and no. 20, no, 23 years old, 27 and no. 22 knockouts. I mean, who's doing it like me in the game? Nobody. And shout out to Worldstar, because we're going to put his ass on Worldstar, too. And your role model, Floyd Mayweather, he was here this evening. Where is it that you can improve? And he was saying that perhaps maybe your footwork and a little flat-footed, that there's places for you to improve. What do you see? Um, I didn't have to use my feet work today. He ran. So I, all I did was cut off the ring. That's all I had to do. You comfortable at this weight? Very comfortable. You've seen that in there. What's next? What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to be honest. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, fans. I got, I, I got to tell you all that this is important. I'm going to be honest. Since everybody thinks I'm picking my opponents, my next opponent, I'm going to let y'all pick. And whoever, whoever got the highest percentage, I'm fighting. Final thought. Any regrets about anything that went on in the pre-fights and all the news conferences? Negative. I'm good. I beat Polly. I left with his belt and his girl. Adrian, congratulations on winning the title. Polly, come on in. Hey, I'm just saying, you lost. I know, I know, I lost. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't brag about taking my side piece. Don't brag about taking my side piece, though. That's my side piece. You don't get laid. All right, all right. Hopefully, we'll have a chance here in a moment to talk to Polly. As cooler heads prevail, let me walk over to Polly and see if he's ready. Polly, are you ready to talk about the fight? Polly, are you ready? Are you ready to talk about the fight? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Hey, Jim. Hey, Paul. 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 Hey,
Let me give Jimmy this to you. Assess the fight from your perspective and the split decision. Um, I, I thought I worked him. Um, he, he did the same thing he did in the De Leon fight. You know, he was sharp in his spots, but he was just wasn't busy. You know, in his spots, he was sharp. He didn't land a lot of the shots he was throwing. They looked pretty, but he, he worked about 30 seconds of every round. You know, it was a close fight because when he did work, it was good. I'm not going to take it away from him, but, but I thought I outworked him by a lot. I thought I outworked him by a lot. I thought I threw a lot more punches. I thought I carried the pace. I thought I threw a lot more body shots. Tom Shrek is a New York judge that was in Al Haven's pocket. It's very simple. I mean, 117-111 was, was a joke, That's man. Disgraceful. That was a joke. This was a close fight. I don't even mind if, if you had him winning close or me winning close. It was, it was really that kind of fight, you know? I'm not an immature kid like him. I'm not going to go up there, up here, and, and talk a bunch of BS and lie and whatnot. The fight really could have won either way. And even the fans, I thought I won the fight. You know, I'll be honest with them, too. It could have won either way. But, you know, in my hometown, as a defending champion, uh, I felt like I should have got it. I'm the defending champion. You have to take the belt from the champion. And uh, I don't think he did enough to take the belt from the champion tonight. But um, Did I, you execute your strategy as you in, wanted to tonight? In spots. You know, uh, everybody has a game plan until they get hit. You know, in spots I did. I felt like in spots I messed up his game plan as well. I felt like we both had to adjust at times, and we did, you know? I thought it was an entertaining fight. I thought it had a lot of momentum changes, and uh, I, I think the fans got their money's worth tonight. But boxing's always full of shit, man. It's, it's always politics in this thing, man. You just, the fans can never go home happy, you know what I mean? It, you get a great show, and then always get spoiled with some BS like this. Well, aren't you, at this point right now, biting the hand that feeds you? Isn't this part of the game? It's part of the game, but is it right, Jim? It's part of the game, but is it right? But does it mean it shouldn't get fixed? It is part of the game. But does it mean everybody should just sit back and not fix it? It's not, it doesn't mean that's right, you know what I mean? It's definitely part of the game. But somebody should stand up and do something about it. I feel like I'm the only one that ever talks and opens his mouth. Listen, man, I got a good job, man. I, I work with you guys at Showtime, you know? I've made some really good money in boxing. I've made some really good money tonight. I don't have to fight again. If I never fight, I'm still okay. I, I enjoy competing, I enjoy fighting. But when it's like this, man, you know, it, it's BS, man, you know? I, I, why would I want if I don't ask you this question, people are going to be upset. Are you saying this fight was fixed? Is I'm this a path you really want to go I'm down? I'm not saying it was fixed, but it's always the politically more connected fighter gets the close decisions, and this was no different. That's what I'm saying. It always happens. It always hey, happens. Paul. Paulie, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time behind the mic.